holy, holy.
Bethel family and friends. And if you've jumped onto the stream for the first time, we are so excited that you're with us in our staff prayer meeting before we jumped into service. We had such an anticipation, not only for God to meet us, but we were talking about the power of our hunger as believers. And I am praying that throughout the service, you wouldn't just encounter the Lord in this moment, but our prayer is that you would receive an impartation and you would receive a, a, a sowing in from the Lord and from our house to yours of fiery hunger for the reality of God in your life. Hunger to encounter God. And so I'm gonna pray in just a few moments, but I'm gonna jump into the chat because we have so many of our friends and family who are here with us right now. If you haven't already, let us know in the chat whether you are joining us every week or you are jumping on for the very first time. And I'm so excited to see, I can see of course, Kath Walden, who I absolutely adore and is part of our online community here. Um, and then Brian, Elias, so good to see you. Elias is here from, um, he's jumped in and streaming and he's part of our BSSM Portuguese school. My husband arrived 2 a.m. this morning and um, came home uh, from a, a nine day trip in Brazil. They had the most incredible time. If you were part of that, I know a ton of you will be um, jumping in to join us who are part of all of those meetings and, uh, and around those cities. They saw the most crazy miracles. Rich was sharing with us that in um, one of the meetings they had, they saw a 12 year old girl who had a tumor on her neck completely in front of um, them and, and everyone around them completely disappeared, dissolve her tumor on her neck. They had um, amazing reports that he's just got uh, from some of the people who were in the church meetings who had, were planning for surgery. One gentleman had a knee surgery planned and he has been um, to the doctor uh, late last week and got a doctor's report clearing him for surgery. 100% re restoration of his meniscus and his knee. Um, and so we're so excited. I'm full of faith coming um, from my home and jumping in, um, anticipating the supernatural work of the Lord. I wanna give a shout out to Zach um, Borsty, who's joining us and Alan Gillard. Um, and he is saying hi to Alicia. We absolutely love Alicia Kay, um, who is joining us from Hawaii, I believe. And um, as we jump in to the service today, we're gonna be receiving from Chris Valentin. He's gonna be ministering in the prophetic and, and bringing such an important word of God. And so I can't wait to worship with you. We are gonna step in right now into worship in just a few moments. So stick with us and then I will see you after the service. We love you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Just had that picture, we're doing that song. Just this thought of, could I get some cool like music in the background so it sounds a little more inspirational? But I had a, um, just this thought of like, some of us just need to hit our knees and quit trying so hard to, to figure things out and to battle. And there's just something about like hitting your knees and raising your hands, just be like, you are worthy, you are holy. I got nothing else but that. So let's do that. I'm trying to think of something we could sing in this key that would be.
you're chatting, keep that up for just about another 30 seconds. Look around. There might be somebody near you you haven't met before. Would you say good morning to them and greet them? That's beautiful. Well, as always, you're welcome to worship up front. If you're joining us online, we're glad you're with us this morning. Thank you for being at church with us. All right. That's enough love. You're good. Just a reminder. Beautiful. We're going to have a, a tremendous time today in the presence of the Lord. He, God comes to church with ideas. God comes to church with ideas. He's got conversations he wants to have with you. He has things emotionally and spiritually and physically he wants to see break out in your life. And so the Lord has got you in the right place at the right time. As, um, as we get ready to just gather and worship, I've had the privilege of just reading through Revelation. A little humble brag there. But the... Uh, <laughs> But just how often, you know, the Revelation has this idea that the Lord's showing us what's going on in the, in the heavenlies, in the supernatural realm, while difficult things are happening in the natural realm. But so often in the heavenlies, they are worshiping the Lord. They are declaring that his, his judgments and his justice is forever and is righteous and true. And I'm just going to read to you just one of the worship songs. So you get the idea this morning as you're standing in the presence of the Lord, there is a heavenly multitude, believers who've gone before us, the angelic hosts, creatures that are like fascinating to even describe or think about are all declaring, holy, holy, holy is the Lord. And they say aloud, hallelujah. And if you don't, hallelujah is, uh, is, is uh, Hebrew for praise and Yah at the end is for Yahweh. And so whenever we say hallelujah, we're saying praise Yahweh. Hallelujah, salvation and glory and power belong to our God, for his judgments are true and just, for he has uh, judged, now this is going to get a little bit weird, the great prostitute uh, who, who uh, corrupted the earth. No, 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 we're good. We want evil judged, right? We like... He's a good God. He judges evil. So he is, uh, judges this, uh, the spirit that has corrupted the earth with her immortal, uh, immorality and has avenged the blood of his servants. He does justice on the earth. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we realize our lives are not just disconnected. The truth is we're not alone. You are with us. We abide in you. You are in us. We've come together as a community of people, and our lives are about so much more than just this 80, 90 years that we have. We are destined to worship and praise you, to be in relationship with you the rest of existence. This morning, we step into our purpose. We step into our, we're going to get really good at this because we are, gonna, we are destined to do this uh, more and more in the future. Bless this time in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, let's worship the Lord together.
shout out your praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. Our God is surely in this place, and we won't be quiet. We shout one more time. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There's joy in the house of the Lord, and we won't be quiet. Here we shout out. changed it's getting harder to recognize the person I was before I encountered Christ I don't talk like I used to I don't walk like I used to I've been washed from the inside I've been washed from the inside Sing that again, everything changed. <laughs> everything changed. It's getting harder to recognize the person I was <laughs> before I encountered Christ. I don't walk like I used to, truly. I don't talk like I used to. I've been washed from the inside. I've been washed from the inside.
again with your own words, just thank him for his blood. Just thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for your blood applied. Your body broken for me. your grace and mercy poured out for us and we'll love you forever here on earth into heaven I've been washed from the inside I've been washed let's sing that one more time what can we say thank you just not enough Jesus your grace and mercy poured out for us. I will love you forever. Here on earth and heaven. We've been washed from the inside. I've been washed from the inside. I've been washed from the inside. Just confess that. I've been washed from the We agree with your work, Lord. I've been washed from the inside. have only been your blood.
Enthroned in glory, my Savior King, your loving kindness has welcomed me. Though I'm unworthy of majesty, you wrap the lowly in royalty. And I
to lift your voices in a shout of praise to the Lord. Lift your voices in a shout of praise. If you're able to stand with us, please do. We're going to pray uh, a couple things together. I, I was thinking ear earlier, first service this morning, um, we've been singing a lot in the last several weeks about the blood of Jesus. It's, it's been a reoccurring thing. It's always there. I mean, we, we never push it out of the way. But, uh, but I've noticed in the last few weeks has been song after song after song. So I was, I was thinking this morning, um, one of the one of the greatest phenomenons that I've seen in my lifetime has been something that took place I think about 30 or 40 years ago when a number of missions organizations felt together at the same time to target in prayer what they call the 1040 window which is the Islamic uh, mostly Islamic part of the world and so what they, what they did is in prayer, they'd come before the Lord and they would pray that people who live in that region would encounter the love of God, that they would experience the love of Jesus. They would see Jesus as the Messiah, the Son of God. So they would pray these kinds of prayers. And something extraordinary happened. People started having dreams in the night of a man in white. They would have visitations where the Lord himself would show up somehow that world broke into this world because this world decided to pray. It's, it's, it's one of the most, I, I know of places where somebody would go in front of a mosque and they would talk to the people as they come in. They would say, have you, have you seen the man in white? If they said no, they would let them enter. If they said yes, they said stand over there. And after there was a crowd of those who had seen the man in white, they would go explain who the man in white was. I use that example for this reason. You have relatives, we have relatives, neighbors, friends, yes. Yes. that have heard your testimony, yes. they've heard you share the gospel, but it wouldn't hurt if they saw the man in white. If somehow we just started talking, talking to the Lord about these individuals, not to remove our responsibility in sharing the love of God, but just simply to pray. Pray knowing that it matters. It makes a difference. And so I'm gonna ask you to pick a friend, a family, something that you know, people that need to know the love of Jesus. And I want you with great zeal to lift your voice with mine. And I want us to pray. How many of you have somebody in mind right now? All right. If, if you don't have anyone in mind, ask your neighbor. Give me a good one. Give me a good one. Just pick a well-known actor, actress, or politician. I don't care who you pick, pick somebody. But I, I'm gonna ask you to lift your voices so that you can hear yourself pray. No timid praying. I want us to contend for people and just believe that God is going to visit households all across the land in this season. Lift your voices with mine. Let's pray together. supernatural invasion of heaven to earth in our families' lives and, and those who have been in places of indecision, people that have been living in compromise or out and out sin, that there would be such wooing 
of the love of God to each one. And that we just, we carry them in our heart before you. And we pray, Lord Jesus, have mercy and draw them to you. Draw them to you. Now I want you just to lay a hand on the shoulder of somebody next to you. Grab their hand, do something. Just pray for them to be overtaken by the blessing of God in this season. Overtaken, overwhelmed by the blessing of the Lord. Let the blessing of the Lord overwhelm and overtake every single person, every single family member represented here, our family, our online family. We declare the blessing of the Lord to overwhelm and overtake you. We pray this in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen, amen. Wonderful. Why don't you turn, bless, bless a bunch of folks before you're seated. Good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing? Can we just thank the worship team again? That was just so amazing, so beautiful. And then also, if you can do me a favor, if you're uh, in here and you have seats next to you, can you go ahead and raise your hand with, how many, with your fingers of how many seats are next to you? And if you are looking for them, just find some of those fingers and seats there. And then if we get filled up here, we do have an overflow in the great room uh, that you can be a part of, and we have amazing encounters that happen in there. Come on. Well, uh, I would love to take a moment. Do we have any first-time visitors with us here at Bethel? Can you just raise your hand really well for us? And church, can we just welcome them? And if you can do me a favor, just keep your hand up. We have a little gift for you that our ushers will come by, so keep that hand raised there. And then I don't know if you realize this or not, but this past week we've had our worship school taking place. And so if, you've, if you're here from uh, visiting with our worship school, can you just give a wave right here? We've just been hearing the most amazing testimonies of God doing crazy stuff. And if you see Brian and Jen and Peter and the team, send your love, uh, jazz, like there's just been... Uh, I've just been, I mean, my sister went, she's just telling me after every session of what God's doing and just how powerful it is. So we're so thankful that you guys are here and with us. If you're joining online, uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good night, depending on where you are. Um, but also we have a, a fun announcement that we have School of the Prophets coming up on August 7th through the 11th. And we have over 400 volunteer opportunities. 400, say 400. We would love your help. If you would love that, we have a slide right here. You can do the QR code or you can just go to Bethel.ws forward slash SOTP volunteer. Uh, we would love your help to make this a very meaningful experience for our guests. Also for everyone that volunteers, we have enough slots so that you get one free session to be a part of School of the Prophets too. So if you volunteer and help out, you're gonna be able to be in a session too, which is gonna be super powerful. And then uh, we have some church news coming up. So turn your attention to the screen. Hi, Bethel family. We've got some updates for you. Here's this week's church news. Bethel Christian School has some four-day camps for young athletes ages K through 12 to hone their basketball or volleyball skills. Students will be in groups based on age and skill and will receive awards, develop skills, learn the sport, and have fun. Learn more at Bethel.com forward slash church news. It's almost time for our Bethel Night at Waterworks. On August 5th, from 6.30 to 10 p.m., we'll be taking over Waterworks Park as a local church body to beat the summer heat together. Last year, this time was packed with fun, connection, and lots of laughter, so we hope to see you there this year. Learn the art of audio production with Bethel Music College's new production certificate. This six-month certificate program will help you gain tools and resources for producing and recording and will connect you with incredible professionals and mentors. Apply today at Bethel.com forward slash church news. 
Join our Bethel Go team on an activation and discovery trip to Israel and Jordan. The Bible will come alive as you visit the land of the patriarchs, walk where Jesus walked, and leave a blessing everywhere you go. This will be an incredible time, and we'd love to have you join us. Learn more at Bethel.com forward slash church news. That's it for this week's church news. If you missed any of these announcements, go to Bethel.com forward slash church news to learn more. Have an amazing week. Bye. Would you Dan is making me, I can hear everything he's saying, and he's making me laugh, so um, it's not a bad thing. Um, He was teasing me because I was talking as I was walking up the stairs, and he's saying, it sounds like the voice of God, everyone stand. Um, I did that for myself. Okay, offering time. We get the opportunity in this moment in our service like we do in every other discipline during our 1030 service to worship the Lord. And this is with our tithes and offerings. Um, We have a QR code on the screen. Otherwise, you can grab your gift or your phone right now. And we are going to declare together offering reading number one. I'm reminded in Matthew of Jesus saying, ask and it will be given to you. We know he's talking about the Holy Spirit, but there's a a principle behind that that is so powerful. Jesus is inviting us to ask of him. So as we freely give our worship through offering, let's join in together and declare this and ask of the Lord this morning. So let's read it together. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Thanks, Jesus. Jesus, we thank you as as we sow into your kingdom. We thank you that you would do immeasurably more than we can ask or think or imagine. But we do, We, as your children this morning, we ask of you, Jesus, and we expect Expect your kingdom to come and invade whatever meagre possibilities or whatever our reality is. We say, let heaven come to earth in Jesus' name. Would you stay standing and join me in welcoming Chris Vallotton as he shares the word with us this morning. Good Good morning. How many of you are leftovers from the worship school? Oh, awesome. How many of you were at my house Friday? Yeah, we had like 500 people at our house. Oh, it's pretty easy. It was in two shifts of 250. And uh, we had a lot of fun. It was, it was uh, pretty crazy. It was 109 degrees. So, uh, yep. Let me just say the pool was pretty dirty when everybody left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, um, why don't you grab a hand and let's pray. Holy Spirit, oh, some of you are passing bags. Sorry about that. (laughs) Holy Spirit, thank you for this day. We ask your blessing. We ask, Lord, that wonders and signs and miracles would confirm the preaching today. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Um, I've kind of been on this journey for a while. Um, You know, the Lord told us, I think it was two and a half, three years ago, that we were to get back to the old gym. And then I had an encounter a few months ago where the Lord talked to me about doing the deeds. I did it first. Um, And then about a week or two ago, we were doing, I have a webcast, podcast called uh, Cultural Catalyst, where I interview people who have a heart to transform culture. And so we were doing an interview. I was doing an interview. I was moderating an interview with some of the School of Prophets leaders, uh, uh, Daniel McCollum, Bethany, and Haley. And the, my team had wrote questions for us to 
uh, talk about. So I was reading off the, question, the questions that my team developed for us, for the four of us to ask, and I was moderating the questions. And one of the questions was, um, what would you tell your younger self? So the three uh, of the other team were answering that question, what would you tell your younger self? It's a pretty common question. And when it came to me and I was moderating my own question, I, I actually felt the Lord say to me, I don't want you to answer that question. I want you to answer what your younger self would tell your older self. And uh, I got so overwhelmed with the presence of God, I, I probably wept for a minute or two before I answered. I didn't anticipate that question at all. And I felt my younger self, I felt, I, I said, my younger self would say, remember when you believed that nothing was impossible with God. Remember when you didn't have disappointments and you doubted maybe it won't happen. Do you remember when you had nothing to lose, when you had no reputation, no fame, no fortune, and you would just do anything, do anything I told you. And uh, I, I just began to, again, and, and by the way, this is, a, this is kind of the season I'm in. Like These kind of encounters are becoming common to me the last three years where the Lord is challenging me to do the deeds. I did it first, take a risk. And what do you have to lose? And so I, I wanna talk today about prophecy. And I know we've shared this many times, but I feel like not only am I going back to the old gym, but I feel like we are going back to the old gym. And I feel like there's a mandate for us to kind of return to the deeds we did at first. And, um, and maybe that's not for you, that's fine, but you're here and I'm speaking. So <laughs> that's what you're gonna hear today. You know, I was, um, I was in Alaska about, uh, about a year ago, less than a year ago, and uh, in, in, I was in um, Wasilla. And this, this gal came up to me and she said, uh, do you remember me? I said, no, I'm sorry. She said, um, you prophesied over to me you prophesied over me many years ago. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, I don't remember that. She said, I was in YWAM in Kona. And I said, oh, I kind of remember that. And she said, I, she said, yeah. She said, um, she said, I had lost, we had lost our son. And I said, oh my gosh, I remember that. And I, I, I may have the details wrong, but the, the overall uh, testimony is true. Uh, she had, her husband and her, couldn't have children, by a miracle, they had a son. I think he was two or three, definitely not, an imp, not, definitely not stillborn, and they lost their son. And they got so depressed that they, I think they lost everything, they went to YWAM to just like start over. And I was there, you know, when you teach at YWAM, you teach for five days, it's four hours a day, it's a lot. And uh, after a little while, like two or three days in, you kind of get to know the people because it's like 50 to 70 people usually. So it's not a great big group. And, and I noticed that this couple, probably in their late 30s, like they were depressed the entire three days. And so I asked the leader, I said, hey, what's going on with this couple? And they said, oh, they lost their child and they decided to come to YWAM because they, they were just, they're just devastated. Their life was destroyed and they're just really depressed. Okay, well, on the last day, which would have been a Friday, I called them out, and I, I obviously just knew what, what, that they had a disaster. Uh, obviously, their leader told me. So I, I said, can you stand up? And they stood up, and I said, I know, I know you lost a child, not because the Lord told me, but because your leader told me. But the Lord says that he's gonna give you twin daughters to replace what you lost. He's gonna bless you with twin daughters. And you know, and so they cried, and it was all cool. Well, I think that was somewhere around 22 years ago. So when I was in Alaska, she came up and said, do you remember you prophesied to me? I said, no, we went through that. And she goes, you prophesied? And I said, oh, that you were gonna have twin daughters. She said, yeah, I thought I'd introduce you to them. And she brought two, the two girls up who were in their 20s. And her mom said, uh, Chris is the reason why you're alive. <laughs> so prophecy is pretty fun. <laughs> Last service, I was in Twinview and I, was, uh, I went down, uh, what I hopefully do today, and I was ministering over like maybe four or five people. And the first girl, 
I ministered to, I said, I see you as a doctor, and I gave her this word about being a doctor, and I said, at the end of it, I said, you, it might be spiritual. She said, no, it's not. She said, the Lord told me to go back to medical school, and I told her she's gonna be a heart surgeon and become a doctor and a heart surgeon. I'm like, that was a good word, you know? <laughs> so I think prophecy is pretty important. And one of the criticisms that we get as a movement is that you guys are always prophesying positive stuff. Like, why don't you do like Ezekiel, you know, Elijah, Elisha, call down fire, you know? Like, why are you guys always happy and why are you guys doing positive stuff? And, and I thought that I'd start this morning a series on prophecy. Um, I've done this many times, so some of our team are gonna, oh yeah, I've heard this all before. But I'd like to just point out that we live in a new covenant. So in Luke chapter 22, Jesus is at what we call the Last Supper. He takes the bread and he breaks it. This is my body, it's broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then he takes the cup and he, and he makes a statement. This cup, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood. And I want to point out that we live in a new covenant. The old covenant was based on your ability to be righteous and keep the rules. And how many of you know, Isaiah prophesied 500 years before Christ, there's none righteous, not even one. But the new covenant isn't based on your ability to be righteous, but on his ability to be righteous for us. And Romans 5, 19 says, for as through one man's disobedience, many became sinners. Even so, through the obedience of one, many were made righteous. And how many of you know, it's not by your works, but his works, that you and I became righteous. In, in Hebrews chapter eight, um, verse 10, the Hebrew writer is recounting an Old Testament prophet. Can I say, he's taking an Old Testament prophecy that was given you know, hundreds of years before, and he's pulling it into the New Testament. And he writes this, um, he, 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 he repeats this prophecy. For this is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I'll put my laws in their minds, I'll write them on their hearts, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. They shall not teach everyone his fellow citizen and everyone his brother, saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know the Lord, from the least to the greatest of them. For I will be merciful to their iniquities and I will remember their sins no more. Now, verse 13 says this. When he said a new covenant, he has made the first obsolete, but what is becoming obsolete is growing old and is ready to disappear. I'd like to point out that the old covenant was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. It's become obsolete and we actually live in a new covenant. Are you with me? Okay. So um, in Matthew chapter five, verse 43, Jesus makes a statement. You've heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say to you, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute us so that you may be like your son, so you may be sons of your father who's in heaven for he causes the sun to rise on evil and good and he sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. This is a pivotal verse because Jesus said, you've heard it said, love your neighbor, but hate your enemies. Where did they hear that? I'd propose they heard it from the Old Testament. <laughs> Joshua was told to go into the land and kill everybody. <laughs> Don't let anybody live. Do you remember the first king that, saw, that Samuel, I'm sorry, that Israel ever had? His name was Saul. And do you remember that he lost his kingship by disobeying the Lord, by giving mercy to a king that God said, kill everybody? <laughs> And Samuel the prophet, who was carrying a sword, took the sword and killed the king. And in the movie, Samuel was the good guy. And Saul, who extended mercy, was the bad guy. <laughs> oh, here we go, okay. <laughs> I'm only pointing out that in the old covenant, they, that your love for God was actually measured by how much you hated people who hated God. David often said in the Psalms, do I not hate those who hate you? And it was bragging. How many like the story of David and Goliath? That was, nobody, nobody's raised their hand. Like, <laughs> only Bill. Bill likes that story. <laughs> the story of David and Goliath is David killing Goliath. This is the story. <laughs> Bill, it's the wrong time to say yes. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm getting at is that the new covenant, in the new covenant, if you want to be like the sons of your father, you love people who don't love you. You bless people who don't bless you. 
And then he goes on to say, and he makes it rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. I'd like to point out in Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13, God tells Moses, it shall come about if you listen and are obedient to the commandments which I've commanded you today to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and all your soul, that he will give you rain for your land in season, early and late rain, that you may gather in your grain and your new wine and your oil. And he will give grass for your fields, for your cattle, and you will eat and be satisfied. Beware that your hearts are not deceived, that you do not turn away and serve other gods and worship them. Or the anger of the Lord will be burned against you, and he will shut up the heavens so that, will, so that no rain and no rain and the ground will be so that there will be no rain and the ground will not yield its fruit and you will perish quickly and in the good in the good land which the Lord has given you and I'm pointing out that in the Old Testament one of the curses of the Old Testament is if you don't serve the Lord it will stop raining now Bill pointed out that it did still rain often in the promised land before they got in there it was a lush land so it had to rain but the point is is that in the Old Testament Think about this, Elijah the prophet stopped the rain for three and a half years without any prophetic word from the Lord. Now the Lord spoke to him after he stopped the rain, but where did he get that idea? Well, from verses like Deuteronomy, where God goes, Ahab and Jezebel are serving other gods. It should stop raining. My point is, is that God does good to people who do bad in the new covenant. <laughs> okay, well, it's getting quiet in here. In Malachi chapter four, verse five, Malachi prophesies, Behold, I'm going to send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. He will restore the hearts of fathers to children, the hearts of children to fathers. I want to point out that Elijah, Elijah is prophesied to come into, in the last days. Elijah's going to come, and what's he going to do? He's going to restore hearts of fathers to sons and daughters, and hearts of sons and daughters to fathers. What did Elijah do in the Old Covenant? <laughs> stopped rain, killed false prophets, 300 of them, judged Israel. But what happens when you take an old covenant prophet and you move him into a new covenant? What is his ministry now? The ministry of reconciliation. Second Corinthians chapter five, verse 16, you know these verses. We no longer know each other after the, after the flesh. What well, we do, we did know Christ this way once before. Uh, the next verse, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things are passed away and all things have become good, new. Next verse, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. How did he do it? Not counting their trespasses against them. Next verse says, and we've been given the ministry of reconciliation as if God was begging through us, be reconciled to God. What's my point? My point is, is that the ministry of reconciliation ought to affect our prophetic ministry. <laughs> We've not been given the ministry of judgment. We are in part of a new covenant in which God blesses people who don't serve him. God loves people who don't love him. God makes it rain on people who serve other gods. <sighs> so quiet in here. Such a good word. <laughs> We've been given the ministry of reconciliation. Now, in the, in the, in the New Testament, Jesus, is, he preaches in the synagogue. And in the synagogue, there's a chair. Jewish tradition tells us there's a chair that the, the uh, Pharisees believed, the religious leaders believed that the Messiah would come, he would sit in this chair that I think hadn't been set in for like 400 years, and he would call for the Messiah's mandate, which is Isaiah 61, the scroll of my Isaiah. And he would sit in that chair and he proclaim, and he would proclaim the, the, mandate, the mandate of Isaiah, the, the Messiah's mandate. One day, Jesus is preaching. It's his turn. He comes and he sits in the chair. It says, every eye is on him. Call for security. He calls for the scroll of Isaiah. He begins to read the scroll of Isaiah, which Isaiah wrote, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me for the Lord has anointed me to preach the good news of the afflicted, bind up the broken heart, speak release the captives, freedom of the prisoners, the favorable year of the Lord, the day of vengeance of our God. But look what Jesus reads. It's in Luke 4, 18. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty, release the captives and recover the sight to the blind, set those who are oppressed free, 
to proclaim the favorable of the year of the Lord. Period. Where Isaiah put a comma, Jesus put a period. Because the rest of the verse is the day of vengeance of our God. I mean, though, Jesus didn't come to judge the world, but that the world would be saved through him. <sighs> Where am I going? I'm pointing out that you don't live in the last days, in the last day. You live in the last days. Okay, I'm breaking time up into three pieces. The first is you don't live in an old covenant. By the way, this is a two hour teaching you're getting in 30 minutes. You don't live in an old covenant, you live in a new covenant. The new covenant is a covenant of reconciliation. The old covenant is a covenant of, just, of judgment. Are you with me? What, what has changed? Okay, well think about this. Let's say that Gabe is a judge. He looks like a judge. <laughs> and let's say that Steve killed my brother. So he goes before the judge and Gabe goes, oh, your brother. Oh, your, your dad, Steve, your dad? Oh, we golf together. He's a friend of mine. Steve, go free. I'm like, wait a second, he killed my brother. How many know that's mercy? But it's not justice. Psalms, 37, Psalms 97 says that the throne, that God sits on a mercy seat, but the foundation of his throne is righteousness and justice. How many know God has a challenge? Because he has to create justice so he can release mercy. Steve's mother comes and says, I will die for Steve. And the judge looks in the archives of fugitives and says, oh, wait a second. I'm sorry, Mrs. Moore, you can't die for Steve because you're actually a fugitive. You actually owe for your own sins. You can't die for his because the soul that sins shall die, you owe for yours. All of a sudden, the courthouse back doors burst open and the son of the judge steps in and says, your honor, I will die for Steve. The judge looks at the archives of fugitives and says, Steve, oh, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Oh, wait a second. You're not a fugitive. You don't owe for your sins. You don't have to die for your sins. So you can die for his. And God creates justice through Christ so he can release mercy. What's the difference between the old and new covenant? Christ died on the cross to release justice so he can extend mercy. How many understand? <laughs> That's a good word, right? Oh, you're getting it now. That's awesome. How many know when we prophesy judgment, we have, un we have actually undone what Christ did on the cross? Because we live in, a, in, in, in the last days. So Paul, Peter, you know, when the Holy Spirit was poured out on, in the first century church, Acts chapter two, they're all acting drunk, they're, they're speaking in tongues, they're, they're, they're acting crazy, and they're like, they're all drunk, and Peter stands up and says, no, these people that you see here, he said, these men are not drunk as you suppose, but this is what was written through the prophet Joel. In the last days, I'm gonna pour out my spirit on a few people, oh, all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men will have dreams, your young men will see visions, even upon your bond servants will I pour up my spirit and they shall prophesy. What I'm getting at is, he says, in the last days, what's God do? And by the way, the eighth verse, or, no, I'm sorry, the, I think it's the 14th verse says, and everyone who shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And he goes on to call it the great and glorious day of the Lord shall come. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. How many of you know you don't live in great terrible, you live in great and glorious? I'm pointing out that you live in the last days. But there is a day coming, a day coming called the last day. I'm gonna read you just a couple of verses. It says, uh, Acts 17, verse 31 says, because he has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Second Peter 3, verse 7 says, he has kept the day of judgment for the destruction of the ungodly men. 
In Jude 6, it says that he has kept eternal bonds under darkness for the judgment of the great day. And seven times in the new covenant, God says there's coming a great and terrible day. This great and terrible day is called the day of judgment. It's always spoken of not as days, but as a day. And God is the judge. It's quiet in here. I wanna point out that we don't live in an old covenant. We live in a new one. This is a new covenant. And we, don't live, and we live in the epoch, epoch, a way God deals with certain people in a certain time. We live not in the last day, the day of judgment. We live in the last days. The last days are called great and glorious, and the last days are days of, rec- of reconciliation. The last days are great, are anyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This, we live in Graceland. Uh, Elvis is dead, but Jesus is alive. I want you to... Are you with me? And I'm pointing out that there is a day coming for judgment, but you don't get to be the judge. God does. Secrets of his heart are disclosed. So he'll fall on his face and glorify God and say, declaring that God is certainly among you. We're talking about New Testament prophecy. What should it look like? I used to think the secrets of that man's heart were his sins. I used to call out people's sins. It's kind of fun. His secret sin. People's secret secret sin. sin. When Danny Silk became our pastor, his very first message was... uh, uh, was on offense. And he said, if you're offended by anyone in this church, I want you to go to them. Well, three hours later, <laughs> there was a line only at my chair. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Every single person in that line was offended by prophecies I'd given them. I said to the Lord, I will never prophesy again. You know how that goes. He's like, uh, yeah, no. And I began this journey of trying to figure out what it was like to be a New Testament prophetic person. And these were the first verses I studied because I based so much of my ministry on the, the revealing the secret hearts of people. And one day I'm reading a verse and I look it up and I realize the word secret is also the word treasure. And I realized that When I prophesied over people, they didn't fall down and worship God and say, God's certainly among you. They ran out, they screamed, they (laughs) did everything but say, God's certainly among you. I'm like, hmm, a little different fruit than I was having. And then I, I realized that there are secrets in people's heart that they don't know about. And there's a great story. I don't have time to tell you the whole story, but I'll I'll give you the overview of it. In 1 Samuel chapter 9, there's a story of Saul, who's looking for his donkeys, and Samuel the prophet. And God says to Samuel the prophet, tomorrow morning, there's going to be a man named Saul. He's looking for donkeys. But you're going to anoint him king. So that next day, Samuel, Saul, ends up at Samuel's house and says, hey, we're looking for a prophet. Do you know where we can find one? He goes, I'm the prophet. By the way, your donkeys have been found. But tomorrow morning, I want you to stay with me till tomorrow morning. Because tomorrow morning, I'm going to tell you all that's in your heart. For aren't you the one that everyone in Israel is waiting on? And Saul goes, I don't know why you're talking to me like this. Like, I'm from the smallest tribe, and I'm from the smallest family in the smallest tribe. Fast forward. The 10th chapter, the first, first Samuel chapter 10, he anoints Saul king. I want to point out that he's saying to Saul, I am going to tell you what's in your heart. How many know there are things in your heart that your head doesn't know? I'm saying he didn't give Saul anything his heart didn't know. He was already already called to be king. He was the only one who didn't know it. Or maybe there was others. And then God said, I mean, then Samuel says to Saul, here's what I want you to do now that you've been anointed king. He's already been anointed king now. He's got a prophetic word, you're gonna be king. 
I want you to go down to, to over to this place where there's, there's prophets coming out from the oak of Tapar, and they're coming down to Bethel. Did you notice they're coming to Bethel? <laughs> Just want to point that out, that they were coming to Bethel. And you're going to encounter the prophets, and you're going to be changed into another man. And the Bible says that when he encountered the prophets, he was changed into another man. I'd like to point out that minist- that that ministry, prophetic ministry, can give you a prophetic word. But it takes a prophetic community to change you into the person you need to be to actually see that word fulfilled in your life. And by the way, I think I'll prophesy this right now because the Lord gave me this a few days ago. He told me that he is sending us reinforcements. And this morning I woke up and I, I got up early and I was praying and the Lord said, remember I told you I'm sending you reinforcements? I said, yeah. He said, a lot of people came here, are going to come here to visit today, and they think they're visiting, but they're actually, they've actually come to be your reinforcements. So I want to prophesy that there are people in this room, there are people on, on our on campus, uh, online campus, that you are called to be here to be our reinforcements. I say that by the word of the Lord. Some of you are just, as, as I'm saying this, like your heart is burning right now. Like you know that you're called to actually live here. Make this your family and be our slaves. Oh, no, uh, that, not that. <laughs> I add it to the word of God to demonstrate how you should never do that. First Corinthians chapter 12 says, now concerning spiritual gifts, I don't want you to be unaware. I wanna start out by saying this about spiritual gifts. They are not, they're not awards. The gift of prophecy, the gift of healing, these, these gifts, they are not awards. You don't get them for being good. You don't get them for being spiritual. They're not a sign that you're spiritual. They're a sign that he is. So when somebody prophesied, it's not because they're so spiritual, it's because they asked. How do I get a gift? You ask for it. What if I don't get it? Ask again. What if I don't get it? Get somebody who has it to give it to you. Yeah, we call this air dropping. In 1 Corinthians 14, he says, pursue love, yet earnestly desire spiritual gifts. Get this, but especially that you should prophesy. Earnestly desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you would prophesy. First of all, I wanna point out, it's not a suggestion. People are like, I don't want spiritual gifts. They're not for you. They're for the people who need the gift. I'm saying, listen, who wouldn't want the gift of healing if your family was sick? I mean, what kind of selfishness is this to go, I don't, wanna, I don't want the gift of healing. I can't heal the sick. Well, Jesus said you could. He didn't say pray for the sick. He said heal the sick. Well, I can't do that. You can because the Holy Spirit lives in you and he wants to give you a gift of healing. So when you encounter people who are in the need, in need of healing, you can heal the sick through the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm saying it's very selfish and self-centered and egotistic to think, I don't want the gifts. Are you with me? Yes. Or to think, I just want the fruit of the Spirit, as if, well, when I get enough character, then I can have the gifts. No, no, the gifts are not awards. You're not getting them because you have great character. You're getting them because you ask for them. Yes. Good point, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> that was a little slow, but that's okay. Um, I think there are hundreds of gifts. I mean, there's nine listed. And if you think there's only nine, that's fine. I think there's hundreds of gifts. But he says, earnestly desire spiritual gifts, especially that you would prophesy. Why? I think prophecy is the most powerful gift. Well, at least one of the most powerful gifts. Because it changes lives. Prophecy is foretelling, which means I'm telling you the future. And foretelling, which means I'm causing the future. Let me say that again. Prophecy is foretelling, I'm telling you the future, but it's also foretelling, I'm causing the future. Let me explain. Do you remember Ezekiel 37, where God sends Ezekiel down to a boneyard and there's all dry bones? And God says to him, can these bones live? Ezekiel's a smart prophet. (laughs) And he says, you know God. (laughs) And God says, listen to this, listen to this, very important. Prophesy to the bones. He did not say prophesy about the bones. He said prophesy to the bones. I'm saying he prophesied because life and death are in the power of the... He prophesies to the bones and the bones come to life and become a mighty army. My point is, is that when you prophesy, 
When it's the word of the Lord, there is red on the blue. Let me demonstrate. Let's pretend that your human words are red. It's a metaphor. So when you speak, they're red. And when God tells you to speak, on the red, there's blue. What is blue? Blue is grace. What is grace? Grace isn't just undeserved favor. Grace is the operational power of God so that you can do what you couldn't do one second before you heard the word of grace. If you receive a prophet in the name of the prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. What is a prophet's reward? It's the ability to do what you couldn't do one second before you heard the word. Are you with me? What I'm getting at, how many know that God wants to do more than you ask or think? Have you ever got a prophetic word that you go, that can't be right. I didn't ask it or think it. (laughs) Brilliant. I remember this, uh, this team, I, I was prophesying to this team of five uh, couples, the 10 people, and actually right here. And this pastor brought him up and said, could you minister to my team? So the first uh, lady and, and guy, man, husband and wife, I, I, I said to her, um, I'm giving you the very short version. I see you um, playing guitar and writing music. And before I get any further, she said, that's not me, it's my husband, he's a worship leader. She said, I'm tone deaf. You know what tone deaf means? She actually can't distinguish tones. She can't sing because she's tone deaf. I said, lady, shut up. <laughs> Do you know what prophecy is? She said, no. I said, well, if you receive prophecy, if you receive a prophet, name a prophet, you get the prophecy word. The prophecy word is the ability to do what you couldn't do one second before you heard the prophecy. She said, all right, do me again. <laughs> so I said to her, I see you playing guitar, writing songs, and, and leading worship. It was much longer than that, but that's the gist of it. So about eight months later, this lady, it, we're having another conference, and this lady comes up to me right in the back, and she said, do you remember me? I said, no. She said, you prophesied over me about eight months ago. I said, uh, that's a lot of people. She said, you told me to shut up. I said, I remember you. <laughs> and I said, I told you you're going to play guitar. And she goes, yeah, write songs and lead worship. I said, I remember that. She said, do you remember what I told you? I said, I actually don't. She said, remember I told you I was tone deaf? I said, I remember that. She said, well, you'll never believe what happened. Actually, I walked out of the sanctuary after getting that prophetic word, like half an hour later. And when I, when I cleared the sanctuary, my ears popped. Like this lady's like almost 40. She said, my ears popped. I can instantly distinguish sound. She said, it's only been eight months. I learned to play guitar. I've written several songs and I lead worship in my vineyard church. That's a good word. What I'm getting at is that if you receive prophecy and it's actually a prophecy. Now, how many know we're supposed to judge prophecy? First Corinthians 14, so let's let two or three prophets speak and let the others pass judgment. And first Thessalonians five says, don't quench the spirit. Listen to this, don't quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterance. Examine everything carefully and hold fast to what is good. Do you know when you don't like prophecy, you're quenching the spirit? Do you know if you've got a couple of bad prophecies and you're like, I never want anybody to prophesy up to me anymore, do you know you're despising prophecy? You're like, you sound like an Old Testament judgment prophet. <laughs> I'm just pointing out that when we get discouraged because the prophecy didn't come to pass or we heard one that's bad, how many of you are supposed to judge prophecy and you hold fast to what is good? Are you with me? Prophecy is for edification, exhortation, and comfort. The three elements of New Testament prophecy are edification, that means to build up. Exhortation, that means to call near. And console, that means to comfort. How many of you know the guy who's giving you the words is called comforter, not judger? (laughs) Are you with me? So this is where we're going. Um, That's a good word, actually. I I, want to just minister to a few of you. Is that okay? I'm going to anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, 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 is there somebody in here you've had three spine fusions but you still have a lot of pain Um, is there anybody in here that's like that would you stand up quickly please please don't come up afterwards that's me I didn't want to stand up it's like and that's me I don't prophesy over you now would you stand up if that's you is there somebody standing people are pointing but I don't see anybody standing right there oh stand up though can you stand are you standing oh sorry (laughs) Lord Jesus. I prophesy that you shall be taller. No, uh, first of all, I, I just, uh, I, uh, right now I release healing to your spine, to your body, 
and the Lord has strengthened your spine, but he's also given you boldness. And, um, and, and there's something about, okay, I know this, the Lord didn't make you sick, but uh, that he's given you a backbone. He's given you confidence, and I saw you moving confidence. I saw you moving in, uh, in healing. I saw you moving in miracles. So not only is the Lord gonna heal you, but he's gonna give you a healing ministry. And the, the, all the years of pain that you've been in, they're gonna result in compassion and power, and you're gonna move in compassion and power like very few people ever move. So I bless what God's doing to you in Jesus' name. Um, I'm gonna share this one. I'm not gonna ask you to stand up, but uh, I, heard, uh, I heard this morning, the Lord said that there's a husband and wife that you made a suicide pact and you even set a date because of the pain you're in. And maybe it's on our online, uh, our online family. Um, you can come up later if you're in here. I'd love to have a team pray for you. But I wanna say this, that the Lord says your greatest days are right ahead. And I, I'm called uh, to speak against the spirit of death over you. And uh, the enemy, he tried to kill Jesus. Remember that? He told Jesus, throw yourself off the pinnacle of the temple. And so that spirit of suicide is on you because the Lord has caused you to be a redeemer. And uh, I release this, the word of redemption and the pain and depression that's been on you. It got so deep because of the uh, child who died. And the Lord said, listen, I'm gonna redeem this whole situation. I'm gonna do what you said could never happen. And you're gonna be a counselor and a consultant and you're gonna bring life and you're gonna bring peace to people. So uh, the Lord says, I'm changing this tonight in Jesus' name. That's a good word. Um, is there somebody uh, named Roy in here? Is there a Roy in here? Roy, someone named Roy? Don't come up later. Okay, no Roy? Oh, is your name Roy? That's your name, okay. Um, the Lord said, I'm calling you to myself. I'm setting you aside as a shepherd a flock, to my flock, a teacher and a protector. Oh, stay standing, sorry. Um, I, I release over you a shepherd's heart that you'd be a protector that you'd be a revelatory teacher, that you'd be anointed to uh, feed God's sheep, that you'd be anointed to protect his sheep, and that you would be anointed to, uh, uh, to be a shepherd to his sheep. So I bless that in you in Jesus' name. That's a good word. Um, is there somebody in here named May? May, May? You're, that's good, stand up. <laughs> hey, when you're desperate, you know what I'm saying? No, I actually do believe it's you, that this is a, uh, the Lord, by the way, the first lady who stood up in the first service was April, and I said, well, you missed it by a month, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the Lord is releasing the gift of faith on you, and he's giving you the office of a miracle worker. Yes. I'll release that over you in Jesus' name. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yep, yeah, what's your name? Would you stand up? Yeah, no, you. What's your name? Candace. Candace? Candace. Oh, that's a good word. Um, I saw the Lord put a crown on your head. Uh, I, saw, uh, I saw the word um, wealth over you. And I feel like the Lord is making you a wealthy woman. I feel like the Lord is giving you a wealthy mindset that you help other people become wealthy, that you're a catalyst to other people's success. I think that um, the Lord is even uh, redeeming, like, um, I don't know, like uh, inheritance that never happened. The Lord says, I'm gonna give you an inheritance. It's gonna be an inheritance that I've been planning for you for a decade. And the Lord's like, I'm gonna bless you. You're, the people around you are gonna be, you're so blessed. How did she get so blessed? How did her life turn around so quickly? And I just wanna say the Lord's releasing prosperity on you in Jesus' name. That's a good word. Why don't you guys, is, are you together? Stand up. Are you like husband and wife? No. Oh. Oh, hopefully soon. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I asked. I shared this in first service, but uh, uh, several years ago, like about 22 years ago, I was in Mount Shasta and uh, there was like 100 people in the room and I called this couple out and they stood up and I gave them this word about having two kids and all this thing. and. We got all done, they came up afterward and said, we don't know each other, we were just sitting each other. <laughs> I was like, oh great. And then six months later, they invited me to their wedding, so that was good. <laughs> but let me say, I won't do that again. 
Um, great. So um, your name is? Steven. Steven, what's your name? Catherine. Catherine. Oh, that's good. Um, Stephen, um, Stephen, I, I saw an entrepreneur spirit on you. I saw you as a builder. I saw the, like Joseph in the Old Testament that everything you do turns to gold. I saw the Lord, uh, I saw that your commitment to the, to the Lord, your loyalty to the Lord in the midst of circumstances like Joseph was in prison, Joseph was in slavery, and finally he went to the palace. But his ability to be loyal when it looked like his circumstances sort of sucked. But he was like, no, the Lord's my provider. The Bible says that every place he went prospered. And it says, because he was a successful man. And you're like Joseph, and you are a successful man. Your family's gonna be blessed. You're gonna have a legacy. You're gonna, your children are gonna rise up and bless you. Your grandchildren are gonna be more famous than you. And I bless that in you. I'm not going to prophesy your marriage together, <laughs> just in case you don't like each other a month from now. <laughs> and uh, I forget your name. Catherine. 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 I saw you as a healer. I saw you speaking, uh, like, not as a physical healer, although I, everyone should move in healing. But I saw you uh, speaking words of comfort and health and, cons and consoling people. And I saw you healing the brokenhearted. I saw you healing the depressed. I saw you like uh, uh, Isaiah 9. He's called the Wonderful Counselor. I felt like the Wonderful Counselor is in you and on you. And I saw people coming around you and you getting a reputation for, um, for having words of wisdom, um, words of breakthrough, um, words of deliverance. And I saw you um, kind of like a heart doctor. And so I bless that in you in Jesus' name. Mm. Um, one more thing. Let's see. It was a. Um, if if you, um, okay. Let's see. I wrote it down. If your back and spine are full of electricity, would you stand up right now? I have a prophetic word for you. If your back and spine, like it's not something you came with, and if you're in our online uh, campus, please uh, stand up. If you're in your car, uh, open the sunroof. <laughs> if your back and spine are like, you know, you're, you're not, not having to think, well, is that me? You know it's you because it feels like there's electricity running through your spine right now. If that's you, would you stand? I think there's going to be like 20 people stand. Is there anyone else? You get two, three. Is there anybody else? Okay, don't, don't come up later, please. Because if you don't have the courage to stand, you won't have the courage to carry this word anyway. Um, the Lord is strengthening your backbone, and he told me, that he was raising up Gideons who were called to be persons of valor. And so I release valor on you. You know, I don't know if you know the story of Gideon. You might read Judges 6, but they're in a really bad situation. Gideon's depressed, and an angel of the Lord comes to him and says, mighty man of valor. And he goes, yeah, where are all the miracles our father spoke of? And, and the, the answer to that was actually, Gideon, the miracle is in you. And Gideon becomes the miracle that Israel needs. And I believe that God's putting a Gideon anointing and mantle on the people that he just gave a sign to. He's giving you a sign so that you'll know beyond the shadow of doubt, he's speaking to me. And by the way, I know this is weird, but you're gonna have this sign happen often. And every time you do, the Lord's gonna remind you of this prophetic word, that you're called to be Gideon. And that you're called to run to the battle, not run from the battle. I release that to you in Jesus' name. Okay. I want to give you an invitation. If you don't know the Lord, this is a beautiful time to actually meet the Lord. Or maybe you've walked away from the Lord. I just want to encourage you right now that I, if you stand up, if, if, you, if you want to know the Lord, first of all, we want to, we're going to have a banner right there. We want you to come up and get prayed for. But um, I'd love to give you a word if, you, if you've come here today and you don't actually know the Lord and you want to know the Lord, would you stand up? I want to just really release something. Over. Oh, that's very courageous of you. Thank you for standing. Thank you for standing. Stay standing. Stay standing. Um, I, I, I heard the word reset and I saw, you know, if you ever had your computer like lock up and you turn it off and you turn it back on and all of a sudden it all works and the Lord, uh, I feel like the Lord is doing this beautiful, amazing work in you 
And uh, there is a, a reconciliation of friends and family, but also to the Lord. And I feel like this is the day when the Lord unscrambles everything for you, uh, reconciles the, the abandonment in your life and restores you to um, this place of, of hope and peace. And uh, the Lord's taking away your anxiety. By the way, the Lord's taking away your anxiety and yours too. And uh, you're gonna sleep all night. You're gonna, uh, the sleep of the righteous is peace. And I wanna say, that you're gonna sleep all night, you're gonna wake up in the morning, instead of being like anxious for the day, you're gonna be full of hope. And, um, and uh, the Lord's uh, doing something special uh, in you, I'm sorry, I don't know your name, but the Lord's doing something special in you in that he's restoring hope for uh, connection and relationship. And so I bless that in you, I bless you too. And um, remember when you wake up tomorrow morning, remember what I said to you that you're gonna have hope, but you're not just gonna have hope, you're gonna have a word that's, uh, that's kinda cycling through your mind of something you're supposed to do and a connection you're supposed to make. And so I bless that in you, in Jesus' name. Um, you're standing for the same reason. Wow, you're wearing a white shirt today. The Lord is restoring your purity, and this is a, a great day of, uh, I think you've known the Lord before. The Lord is restoring your, your walk. He's uh, erasing your whiteboard. He's uh, taking away your old garments. Um, I saw uh, in Zechariah, it says, the Joshua, the high priest, was standing for the Lord in, 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 um, in soiled garments. And the Lord said, I rebuke you, Satan. And he dressed him in beautiful uh, festive robes. And I saw the Lord dress you in festive robes and say, you're never gonna turn around. This is your day of loyalty. It's your day of covenant. It's your day of connection. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, who's coming? The love for you that stood up to come and to over here, and some of my friends just wanna pray for you. Um, if you're with them, if you um, brought them, you can just hang out for a few minutes. They'd love to pray for you. They probably have some words for you too. And uh, thank you so much for listening. God bless. Such a great word from our own Chris Valentin. Would you mind standing and ministry team, uh, would you make your way to the front? I love it because we have received brothers and sisters in Christ this morning. If you uh, received uh, salvation this morning, then we invite you to come to the front where we have ministers who will pray with you um, and teach you about this new journey you've embarked upon. And for us, I just, the rest of us, I would love for us to declare something. Um, and I'm gonna use a term that is, gender, that is gender related, but I'm gonna use it in a genderless way, okay? So I want you to repeat after me, I am a son of God. I am a son of God. Therefore, I will prophesy. Therefore, I will prophesy. Bless you in your week and bless the words that the Lord will give to you to speak to those around you. If you would like prayer, our ministry team is up front and they are available to pray with you, prophesy over you, declare healing into your body. Whatever you need, come and receive it. Other than that, have a great Sunday. We'll see you back tonight at 6 p.m. God bless you. Our ministry team is here available. If you'd like to receive prayer, please rate. Come, come to anyone whose hand is Wow, wow, wow. Such a good word uh, from Chris. So powerful. Um, I know things were happening in the room people's hearts being moved. Uh, I would love to know from you guys in the chat of what stood out to you the most during the message. If you wanna just put it in the chat, uh, we wanna hear from you. But also, I, I actually felt led to prophesy over some of you. And so Brian O, you're on the YouTube chat right now, is um, similar to the word that Chris gave that lady earlier. I saw God putting a crown on your head and I saw your whole financial situation changing. And I saw the Lord coming through provision, canceling debt, and breakthrough, and there's an entrepreneur spirit on you, and I feel like God's gonna connect you with different people uh, that have uh, strategic um, input and resources that are gonna help you actually start a business and grow a business. And I saw you've been so faithful within your work. You've been such a loyal friend, such a, a, a loyal employee, and I saw the Lord actually giving you confidence to take a leap of faith, and I just saw a great financial breakthrough over you. And then uh, I also had a word for Jody. Uh, on Bethel TV that you're watching today. Jody, I just saw the Lord take his hands and wrap them around your family. And I feel like you're gonna start seeing the hand of God over uh, family members, children, 
uh, even brothers and sisters and I feel, and even over your life. And I just saw great encounters in the night for people. I saw you waking up uh, with fresh dreams from heaven. And I feel like you're supposed to get a, a pen and a notepad uh, by your bed, or you can have, you know, uh, your phone or whatever. But I feel like God's going to start giving you dreams of encounters and they're actually going to be real. I know this is hard to describe, but you're going to have encounters in your sleep where the Lord actually takes you to different places. And then you're going to get testimony of people meeting you from those places, actually explaining that you actually came to them and appeared to them. And I was reminded of a friend of mine that is from Africa, and he had this dream where he showed up in this field and ended up preaching the gospel and all these workers in the field ended up coming to Christ. And then he was at church and there's these people visiting from out of town and they came up to him and go, you're the guy. And he said, what are you talking about? And he said, you came in this field. We're, we're managers over this, I forget what type of field it was, but they were working agriculture. And you just showed up and all of a sudden you started preaching the gospel and people started giving their life to Jesus. And then we were looking at the people, but when we turned back to look at you, you were gone. And I know that sounds out of this, like out of this world, but I feel that similar thing over Jody, that you're gonna start having these profound experiences and that God's raised you up to be a person to actually release the captives free, to bind up the broken heart you're actually going to release wholeness and healing over people. And so I just want to bless you with that right now. And then uh, uh, Stephanie Esther, I just feel like God is just crashing in with breakthrough. And I um, I just felt such compassion for, for God, uh, like from God for you. And I heard, I heard this change in song over your story where before it was just like, man, I'm not, uh, things aren't going my way. It feels like circumstances aren't adding up. And then I just heard this song, everything's going my way. I'm not a singer, so I apologize. But I feel like there's gonna be a change in tune. And I think it's gonna be a banner over your life that's gonna start happening, Stephanie. And you're gonna start finding yourself saying, everything's going my way. And so I just wanna bless you with that. And then also with, with Chris was um, sharing, I just felt a grace for an impartation of prophecy. And maybe many of you have been doubting, can I hear God? Can I, can I do this? And I felt this grace uh, being released to you right now. And so if you want this gift, if you actually want to be able to move in prophecy, to actually bring hope to people's hearts, to bring a shift in people's lives, I want you to hold out your hands like you're about to receive a gift. And specifically, I feel like there's someone that just tuned on. You've never watched this before. You're on YouTube and you're watching, you're like, what is this guy talking about? What is he doing? Is this even real? And I want you specifically to hold out your hands and I just want you to say this, come Holy Spirit. Just repeat out me out loud, come Holy Spirit. And you're gonna feel the presence of God begin to come on your hands and you're gonna feel almost like a wind come over your face and it's gonna be the Holy Spirit beginning to minister to you and God revealing the love of God to you. And so Father, we just release that encounter right now, but then also for everyone receiving, Father, I thank you for an impartation of prophecy being released right now. I thank you for an ability to hear your voice, to begin, uh, and I just hear God uh, say, uh, the, the, the self, the doubt, the self doubt that you have when it comes to hearing my voice is being washed away. And many of you have this mindset of like, I feel like that's God, but I think it's me. This feels like my thoughts, but it's a random thought. And I feel like God's just like, I've given you the mind of Christ. It's 1 Corinthians 12, 16. It doesn't mean everything we think is, is of God, but it does mean we have the ability to think like him. And I feel like God is arming you when you move in love, trust your mind. And I felt like this thing with prophecy for everyone on this call to realize that like when we're operating from love, it doesn't matter, we can't fail. fail. Even when we get things wrong, God works them out for our good. I'm reminded of a friend, he ended up praying for a person on the airplane because they had a broken foot and he prayed for him three times and nothing happened while they're in the flight. You know, it's a good place, they have nowhere to run, right? So they're praying for him and nothing happens. No change in pain, still in a lot of pain. So he, and then he goes back to his seat. He's like, man, I missed it. I missed it. It didn't go the way I thought. And then when he's getting off the plane, this person is standing at the end of the, the jet bridge waiting for him. And he's like, oh my gosh, maybe they got healed. It worked out. And so they get there and he's like, hey, are you healing? They're like, no, I, I'm still in a lot of pain, but I've never met anyone with such love, compassion, and faith. This Jesus that you talk about must be real. How can I know him? And so my friend ended up leading this lady to the Lord at the end of the jet bridge because of the love and the faith that he displayed. 
And God's just looking for a willing heart and a willing vessel to actually step out. And I just wanna encourage you, as long as you're in love, you cannot fail, even if you feel like you miss it. And so Father, right now, I thank you for an ability to trust their mind, to trust their instincts, and to trust the thoughts that come over them, that when they move in love, your mind is actually being imparted to them, that there's actually grace equipping them. And so Father, I thank you right now in Jesus' name, amen. Well, bless you guys. Thank you so much for coming. We love you so much. Also, if you uh, just accepted Jesus in your life or you want to accept Jesus, just put I need Jesus in the chat and we will have a link below that you can go to and we have people that wanna pray with you, minister to you. And so just be on the lookout for that in that link. Uh, God bless you guys. Tonight, we actually have, uh, it's a little awkward, myself and my wife, Ruth, are gonna be preaching tonight, uh, Sunday service. Hopefully we won't do a lot of preaching. We wanna do a lot of ministry time uh, and we wanna minister to you online as well. And so uh, we're believing God to do a very, a powerful time, a thing tonight. And so just wanna bless you guys and hopefully we'll see you tonight or in the morning, depending where you are. So God bless you guys. I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God And all my life you have been faithful And all my
of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in my darkest night. You were close like no other. I've known you as a father. goodness of God. Oh, yes. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. And every breath that I am made, oh, I will sing of the good Jesus' name, just like Lazarus. 
We join the resurrection and stand beside the heroes of the faith with one voice, a thousand generations. Sing out your own song tonight. Lift up a voice. 